I'm Jill Ferris, Senior Director of Engagement, Learning, and Interpretation at the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum. And I'm Jen Doldy. I'm a Curator and Folk Life Center Manager here at CBMM. And we are anticipating the opening of the Changing Chesapeake, which is a concept we've been thinking about for well over a year. Um, I think its, its origins are in part in our interpretive planning process. Yeah, when we put together our interpretive plan um, about two years ago, one of the key interpretive themes that came out of that is the idea of people taking inspiration um, and defining their identity from the Chesapeake Bay. And we wanted to find a space where we could make that opportunity available to our community members. Absolutely, and we've been showcasing the work of incredible artists such as photographer Dave Harp, um, photographer and documentarian Michael O. Snyder, um, who've used their, their lens, their eye on the world to talk about things like the changes to the climate, um, to the communities in our area. And we really wanted to provide the opportunity for, for everyday people, for a contemporary voice of the people who live, recreate, um, even those who have moved recently to this region, to, to document what they're seeing around them, the, the change, um, their fears about what they've seen, the, the incredible um, differences and to their culture, uh, the ways of life, such as the fisheries that um, have happened uh, in the last hundred years. So it was really important in pulling this exhibition together that it was available and accessible to as many community members as possible. We wanted to um, put out an open call and we wanted people who think of themselves as artists and people who maybe don't, who wanted, were willing to experiment with art to find a way to respond in the exhibition. So in putting an exhibition together at CBMM, normally the exhibit is up for about a year. I think what was really interesting about this process is that the call was open for almost the same amount of time. So we've been thinking and working on this exhibit um, for probably longer than it will actually be up, which is an extended period of time. Uh, we put out a public call to people um, we wanted to make sure it was accessible, it was available in, um, in Spanish as well as, as in English, working with community partners. And what we ended up with was over 125 responses with all different artwork and different media from people really around the Chesapeake Bay. Um, we have people represented throughout the entire watershed. Um, and that diversity has been really a highlight of the exhibition planning process. I think this show is also um, a chance not only to engage with people who don't see themselves as artists um, professionally, certainly, or even um, as, as hobbyists um, to convey that, but it's an important part of our Folk Life Center activities. And, you know, when we think about culture and community life, um, how we see ourselves, how we see our place in the community is essential. And so we're very proud that uh, through our status as a regional Folk Life Center, funded by the Maryland State Art, Arts Council that we could make this exhibit happen uh, to really showcase uh, current voices. So we're documenting um, not just what people of the past thought about this region, but what people are thinking and feeling right now. And I think one other thing that really sets this exhibition apart for us is that our curatorial team stepped out of the process. We put out a call Broadly, we worked to facilitate and manage the process, but we brought in a panel of, um, of five people who live in different parts of the Chesapeake Bay region. They have different backgrounds and professional experiences. Some are involved in public arts or arts education. Others are working as scientists. Um, to come together and actually look at the artwork that had been submitted. They conducted a blind review and made recommendations to our curatorial team about what should be included. Um, and then we looked at those submissions and tried to find a way to include as many voices as possible. So what we have is an exhibition with almost 70 artists who will be reflected in 78 artworks on the wall. And it covers the gamut. We have everything from um, from quilts to um, woven textiles to painting and photography. There are literary artworks, um, there's sculpture. There's a music video, there are a couple of music videos. Stop motion animation. 
And one of the things that was incredible about this process, and maybe a little nerve-wracking, is, is we didn't know what we were going to get. We put it out there in the world. Um, we, we sponsored some workshops to engage people and to inspire them to think about different ways they could express uh, what they're seeing and feeling. Um, but we didn't know. And uh, as things started to come in, it became very exciting to then see the outcome of the panelist process um, and then to um, do our final review and say we want to include as many voices as possible. Paired with, by the way, you know, their artist statements. So just as significant as the artwork that they created for this exhibition is the idea of um, their voice, their artist statement. So why did they create this? And we had a series of questions that we posed to them. They could respond to any or all of them. You know, what do they see uh, as the future for the Chesapeake? What changes are they observing in their community? How do they see the Chesapeake as being integral to their personal identity? Um, and their written responses to that, which will be, which will be part of their, their label on the wall, um, is as much a part of this presentation and this exhibition as the artworks itself. And it really helps to go to their individual minds and concepts. It really strengthen, strengthens the artwork and um, gives a different view and lens on what they were thinking. So what you'll see on the walls are uh, voices and perspectives from your community members. Um, you'll have a chance to see their words and how they've interpreted that into their art. Um, and I think there's just a world of opportunity. It's an art exhibit that's unlike anything I've seen and I'm really excited to, for you to have the chance to experience that as well. The, the Changing Chesapeake will be up through February of 2024, so we invite all of you to come and see the amazing and diverse group of artworks we have here.